But first, we head to India, where cricket is more than simply a sport for the masses. Its popularity reaches near religious proportion, and its stars are revered for their ability with either bat or ball. though playing at home might not be the advantage we thought it to be, as Vinod Campbell explains. When you're playing against some opponents and plus your crowd is with you, but sometimes the crowd goes against you also. But it's like very, very, still be very competitive for us. I think 900 million people are watching you, you know, and they're praying for you and, you know, they have a lot of high expectations. So, but sometimes it is easy to, you know, sometimes it is easy to fulfill them but uh, sometimes you can't so it's like uh, it's a very very hard task for us experienced campaigners like martin crow are not fooled by that codology you've got to be prepared for the the bombs and the crackers and the you know the the din that is there the hum and uh just try and quiet your mind it's your own thoughts that are the ones that let you down um, the negative thoughts about. So you, you really just got to try and uh, quieten those down and, and remove them if, if necessary. With India having taken the Test Series 1-0, it started as overwhelming favourites for the one there. New Zealand though had brought in two one-day specialists, Gavin Larson and an exciting opening batsman who can bowl a bit in Nathan Asco. The first match of the series started off at Jamshedpur with the steelworks there in the background and a huge crowd waiting to see Sachin Tendulkar fire at the top of the order. It certainly seemed in devastating form, picking boundaries almost as he wanted, and the crowd was in ecstasy. Tendulkar got to 30 in almost no time, but then it all ended for him. Mark Greenbatch picking off a wonderful catch at short mid-wicket, and Tendulkar's 30 had come from only 19 balls. Danny Morrison looked just as surprised as it all, as a hush descended over the crowd. But his opening partner, Manoj Prabhakar, in his inimitable style, kept chipping away, and the runs kept coming for India. That injected a bit more life into the crowd. But New Zealand were to pull it back with Gavin Lawson and Dion Nash picking up an absolutely stunning catch on the edge of the circle at mid-on. It was typical of New Zealand's fielding effort, as you take another look at it. Lee Germont was pretty satisfied with that. Better things were to follow. With India's top order crumbling a bit, it was now down to Prabhakar to keep things going for them. He'd always been the least fancied of the Indian batsmen. But on this day in Jamshedpur, he kept the innings together until an ugly slog ended what had been a very good inning. Prabhakar got 83 and his dismissal marked the beginning of the end for India. They came apart to be all out for just 236, with virtually no contribution from the bottom order. It was expected to be a competitive total, but this man, with no century in India at all, was determined to produce another result. With few opportunities to show his worth in the test matches, Martin Crow turned to the one-day international at Jamshedpur to stamp his class on Indian ground. Mark Greatbatch gave him company for a while until his blistering innings came to an end, bowled by Prasad for 31. The crowds were ecstatic, but that was all they were to get for a long, long time as the tall, elegant left-hander Stephen Fleming walked in. Martin Crow rode his luck. A couple of chances like that went down. And Mohammad Azruddin, who said high standards, wasn't happy at all because Martin Crow was to respond in dramatic style. He knew it was his day. And as the shots kept flowing, New Zealand came closer and closer to the target. Martin Crow on 98 was just one shot away in his first century on Indian soil. But he had to wait a while to see that happen. As his father Stephen Fleming struggled to get to the other end, 
and it required the television replay to finally pronounce the verdict. There's a bit of help there from the bowler though. He wasn't the only one caught napping. And Stephen Fleming is delighted to have played his role in Martin Crow's century. And then Fleming just chipped this ball for a single. New Zealand produced a victory that was unexpected but quite emphatic. Congratulations all around for Martin Crow, because it was his innings of 107 that had laid the foundation for it. Stephen Fleming not out 78, and New Zealand go one up in the series. But the Indians turned things round quickly. They got a good win at Amritsar, there was a washout in Goa, and then they were off to Pune, where the crowd was excited. I want to ask you why you're here watching the cricket today. This is Sachin Zandalkar. Why is that? Because I like him. I'm fond of him. I'm a great fan of him. You, you like him because he's a, a great batsman? No, he's, a, he's like a, He's something, he's a, uh, he's a fame to the country. He's already got India somewhere, a place in the world. That's why I like him. I'm proud of him. What do you think of the cricket? It's brilliant. I, I love cricket. Like, even I play cricket for my college, so I just think it's fabulous, out of the world. Who did you come here to see? Who? All the players. All the, all the Indian players are my fans and the New Zealand players too. It was another early morning start at Pune. New Zealand didn't get off to a great start with Nathan Astor run out of a no ball. It was one of those occasions when the enclosing Indian fielding found its mark. This was a direct throw from Ashish Kapoor. Much improved Javagal Srinath then used the wicket of Mark Wadebatch. And with both the New Zealand openers gone, the advantage lay with India. But then, out walks Chris Cairns. And what followed is one of the most wonderful exhibitions of batting ever seen in India. The water twos was keeping Chris Cairns company but he ended up having the best view of the match. Chris Cairns got to his first century in One Day International and all the experts rated it as one of the best seen in India. Cairns' excellent century allowed New Zealand to reach 235 for six after a rather poor start, but on a wonderful batting wicket, there's always the thought that it may not be enough. Vinod Kamli had never failed in Pune, his adopted city. He looked in wonderful touch. And Mohammad Azruddin's silken touch was once again in evidence. The New Zealand bowlers looking desperate. The breakthrough finally came. It required the television replay once again. It was very close. And even though Roger Tews broke the stumps of his elbow, the ball was in his hands, and Vinod Kambi was on his way. But it only meant the entry of Sanjay Mandrekar in wonderful form in the series and largely as a result of contributions from Mandrekar, Kambli and Azruddin, India came home with time to spare at 236 for 5 and went 2 and up in the series. Even though Cairns followed up his brilliant 103 with 3 wickets to win man of the match. New Zealand had to get it right at Nagpur and their openers great batch and Astor in contrasting styles set them off to a blistering start. Nathan Astor in particular it was very good coming down the wicket. And some of his clean hitting is a treat to watch. Martin Crow took off from Nathan Astor. And his runner ball 63 is probably the best innings of the match. The crowd here in Nagpur who came expecting to see an Indian victory retreated instead to a maiden one day century for Nathan Astor.
His innings of 114 was the foundation for New Zealand's huge total of 348 for 8 from 50 overs, their best in one-day internationals and the highest seen in India. Predictably, it was too much for India and New Zealand came to Bombay two games all. It was expected to be a cracker of a final as Bombay and the Brabant Stadium were all decked up for it. India finally produced the start that had been eluding them as Sanjay Mandraka took a blinder to dismiss Mark Greatbatch. Once again, Great Batch had been caught outside the off-town, and Mandrega did the catch of a lifetime. Nathan Assel couldn't quite reproduce the same form, with New Zealand losing both openers on the wicket that was pretty fresh. It seemed it might be India's day. <laughs> Lee German was the last man out, and New Zealand had collapsed for just 126 quite the perfect recipe for an Indian win in the series. India only needed 127 runs to make, and you'd have thought they'd get there pretty easily. It was Vinod Kamli who provided the flourish to the Indian innings. And some shots that were as lucky as those, and some others that were positively brilliant. The consistent Manoj Prabhakar laid anchor for India after they'd lost a few early wickets and his presence at one end was vital to India's fortune. After India had lost some early wickets, Ajay Jadija came in and in many ways he was India's batsman of the series, chipping in just when runs were needed. partnership took India closer to their target of 126, as was Jadija with a chip over cover, finally settled issue. India had won the series 3-2, New Zealand had won hearts with their fighting display and with their great ability to defend a small total in this game at Bombay. Prabhakar is not out 32 in the end, he won man of the series and Jadija's 35 not out confirmed his increasing value to the Indian team. So India won the series 3-2 and we'll be back on the Coca-Cola World of Cricket after the break.